Hey everyone, my name is Sophie from Sophisticated Organization. Welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new here. Today I'm going to be sharing with you organizing tips and strategies that actually make your life easier. I know sometimes there are organizing strategies that I share or you might hear other people sharing or images that you see of perfectly organized spaces that sometimes feel like there is more of a hassle than it's worth, especially when you think about like decanting pantry items and having all uniform containers with all of your dried goods in your pantry. A lot of times people think that that's just really not worth the effort, but these tips today I'm telling you are going to be worth it. There's going to be no to minimal effort that you need to put in for these tips and strategies. So hopefully they're helpful for you. Maybe you're already doing some of these things. I would love to hear from you if you are, or if you aren't and you found a strategy that is helpful, let me know which one is your favorite in the comments below. With that, let's jump right into the video. The first tip is to store items where you plan to use that item. That kind of seems obvious to some, not everyone. I have a few examples of what I mean by this. You'll see I have my cabinet open behind me here in my kitchen. This is where I keep my coffee and my tea but also where I keep my mugs. I have my Keurig also right behind me. So it's this little coffee station. So I don't have to run all around the kitchen to go to my coffee maker, go grab the coffee, go to a different spot to grab the mugs. And having everything in one spot makes it streamlined. I'm saving time. And you also don't have to think about where all of the different items are stored, especially in the kitchen when you're thinking about where you should put items. I like to think about where I'm going to use them. My mom always told me when I was growing up that the silverware drawer is usually the drawer that's closest to the table or closest to the dishwasher because of your loading and unloading of the dishwasher or closest to setting the table. Same with your main dishes. Those should be close to the dishwasher or close to where you're going to set the table. I just kind of think that makes practical sense. Another way you can think about this store things where you're going to use them strategy is cleaning products. I'm not a huge fan of having duplicates of everything and increasing the amount of products that you have in your house, but it doesn't hurt to have a quick little caddy in your bathroom that has a multi-surface cleaner and a glass cleaner, maybe a toilet cleaner or something like that in your bathroom so you don't have to go running around the house to get everything and it's going to encourage you to do that quick cleaning a whole lot more often because it's right there where you use it and it requires a lot less effort. Next up are Lazy Susans, and these take no extra effort on your part. All you have to do is put your items on it and give it a spin and you're good to go. It makes accessing items so much easier. I love using them in my pantry. I have two of them in my pantry. I have a large one as well as a small one with all of my oils and vinegars and some extracts and cooking sprays and things like that. But I also use them in other places in the house. I have them in my linen closet to store all of my cleaning products. I have one in my bathroom for my daily use items. And I even have one in my refrigerator. Sky's kind of the limit when it comes to Lazy Susans in my mind and where you can put them and how you can use them and what types of items you can put on them. So get creative with it. I think the best place to put a Lazy Susan, which I don't really have in our current apartment to deal with, is a corner. So especially if you have a pantry that has a corner to it and you feel like there's dead space, a Lazy Susan is a great option so nothing gets lost in the way back spot of that corner. But even in my pantry, I do have a little bit of dead space that goes way to the back there. So I like having my large Lazy Susan there so nothing gets lost in that area either. If you aren't using Lazy Susans yet, First of all, what are you doing? But second of all, you should get on it because they are awesome. This next one is to sort papers as they come into your house. The second I walk through the front door here and get my mail in my hand and have all of my letters and different things that I have in the mail, I go through and immediately recycle what I can get rid of. I try and shred items that need to be shredded. So I open up all of the letters and all of those packages quickly and assess where things belong. If there are things that I need to take action on, but I'm not quite yet ready to take action on them, I would 
obviously encourage you if you can to do it right away when you walk in the door. But if you don't have time right then, keep one pile of items that need to be addressed. And that can be in your office or wherever you deal with those types of items. Maybe in your mudroom when you walk in, you can leave your pile there in a nice little mail sorter. But you really don't need a whole bunch of different dividers and things to sort your mail. Just one pile for action. Go through them as often as you can and address them and put them in their proper homes or take care of the bill and then shred it or whatever it might be. This one is one of my absolute favorite organizing hacks or tips to make life easier. And it does take a tiny bit of effort, at least at the beginning. Then once you get used to it, it's so much easier and it feels second nature and it doesn't feel like it takes extra effort. And I know I said a lot of these tips are really simple and don't take more effort on your part, but this one might be an exception and that is file folding. I first read Marie Kondo's book years ago and started adopting her method of file folding maybe five years or so ago and I have honestly not turned back. I started by just doing my sweaters, then I moved to my pants and then my t-shirts and my entire dresser right now is all file folded. That method where you can easily see everything and that's why it makes it so much easier is that you can see every item that you're looking for as opposed to the traditional method of folding where you have a stack of t-shirts and you have to pick everything up and look under and oftentimes disturb the other folded items to find what you're looking for. And then you make a mess in your drawer, you have to refold everything. But with the file folding method, especially if you add drawer dividers to it, that will help keep your file folds in place, keep them straight, keep them from flopping over. With that combination of file folding and the drawer dividers, you just simply pull out the item that you're looking for and nothing goes disturbed and it's such a great solution. If you haven't tried folding this way, please give it a try. I have a video where I shared a full dresser tour and tips on how to fold certain items. I gave a quick little folding tutorial. So I'll link that in the cards above if you're interested in watching that. The other thing that I want to mention when we're talking about file folding is that this filing method, not just file folding, but filing in general, is such a great organizing strategy that's going to make life easier for you. In my freezer video that I shared, I use that filing method of sorting my frozen meat. So instead of stacking items on top of each other in the freezer, I flipped them on their side, put them in a little bin and thought of them like a filing cabinet. And that way you can see exactly what you're looking for. And I know I had a lot of people ask questions in that video. You know, what do I do if I don't have a side by side freezer? I have a drawer freezer, I have a chest freezer. And my advice always was to those people and still continues to be, think of filing, not piling. So file, don't pile, I think is a good little rhyme that you can remember yourself. Anytime that you can flip something on its side and think of it like a filing cabinet as opposed to stacking items on top of each other, it's just gonna make it easier. I do it with board games sometimes. I've organized my brother and sister-in-law's house that way, my parents' house. I've implemented a lot of filing in there and with other clients as well. So try that file folding, but also try the filing anywhere else in your house that you can come up with the opportunity to file, not pile. This tip I shared in my cord and cable organization video, but I think it makes your life so much easier when you label your cords. The number one place that I like to label my cords because of how often I plug and unplug them is under my desk. I take cords out to travel, I rearrange things. So it's really helpful for me when I go down, crawl under my desk to that power strip and can easily unplug my work computer to take it to travel just by knowing from the bottom exactly what cord is which cord because of that cord label. Also think it's really helpful behind the TV. I'm not great with technology. I don't know all of the different types of cords. So labeling those are super helpful for me if I ever run into an incident where I need to plug and unplug things and don't remember where different things go. Also really helpful if you plan on moving anytime soon. If you've recently gone through a move and you've unplugged all of your cords, packed them up, brought them to the new house, and you have no idea what they are, what they went to, where they go, all of that 
stuff. If you label them in advance, you're going to remember. And even the chords that you aren't actively using, if you have backup chords or chords that you keep in some sort of a container with all of your backups, make sure you label them or you're going to have a pile of mystery chords if you don't already have a pile of mystery chords. I'm hoping this one is pretty obvious and that most people are already doing this, but if you're not, it's gonna make a huge difference if you decide to sort and color code your closet. I like to sort by category first and then organize by color within each category. So for example, behind me, I have all of my dresses here and they are sorted in rainbow order. I don't differentiate between short sleeve or long sleeve dresses. I just put them all together. And then on the other side of my closet, I have my short sleeve and long sleeve shirts combined together again in color order. Then I have my tank tops, then I have some jackets and then skirts. All of those within each section are color coded. And when I go to build an outfit, it makes it so much easier. And I do the same thing with my shoes too. So if I go here and I pick out a dress and I know that I wanna wear a nude heel with this blue dress, I go to my section with nude heels and I know exactly where things are. And the same thing works for my closet. So if I pick out a skirt and I know that I wanna wear a tank top with it and it either will look good with a white tank top or a green tank top it's so easy for me to go to my tank top section look at those two color sections within that and find my couple of options that are going to match when things are thrown all over the place it just adds more time and while it might take a tiny bit of time initially to organize your closet then you just put things away where they belong every single time after you use them and it's super easy to maintain I have one more tip while we're in the closet here. That is to pre-sort your laundry if possible. Now, the solution that I have, I am in love with. It works so well for me. My husband was a little bit resistant at first, and I'll say this strategy really only works if you have the space to do it. So you can either do a system like I have here, or one that is a little bit more horizontal as opposed to vertical, depending on your situation and your space. But I bought this unit off of Amazon, and it just looks like a furniture piece, and then when you open it up, it actually houses all of our laundry baskets. So we have one for lights, one for darks. I have one for workout clothing. I have one for towels. And there's even one for dry cleaning and hand washing clothing. So this unit fits a whole lot. It was otherwise dead space in our closet. We probably would have put some sort of a laundry basket, laundry bin, hamper, whatever in this area, but it never would have taken advantage of all of that vertical space. So this solution works really great for us. I just used these laundry baskets from Target and had enough shelves to perfectly do that. But I will say the pre-sorting of laundry is just one less step that you have to do when it's time to do laundry. You don't have to worry about dumping everything out and sorting through items. And it's just ready when the white bin is full. I just take it, walk it to the laundry, wash it. We fold our clothes and I toss it right back in here and it's that easy. This last organizing tip that's going to make your life easier is to keep travel items pre-packed. Now, that's not to say you need to keep everything pre-packed, unless of course you're a flight attendant or a pilot or something like that that you're jetting off all the time and you need clothing pre-packed and all that stuff. I'm mostly just talking about a few things specifically, and the first one is your toiletry items. You might think that that's a hassle to go through and pack all of your toiletry items right now because you might not be leaving for a trip right now, but it's actually the lazy version to keep your items pre-packed because you don't have to pack and unpack them every single time. What I do when I get back from a trip is I take my travel toiletries, I keep them in the bottom here in this miscellaneous drawer. I take all of my travel toiletries and assess if anything ran out while I was on my most recent trip and if I need to refill it or replace it, I take care of that right away. I zip it back up, throw it in here, and the next time I go for my trip, all I do is grab it and go. It is that simple. Another thing that I do that with is I've shared before, I have a travel case for all of my cords and things that I use to charge my phone and my iPad. I have a mobile charger in there. I have an extra Apple Watch charger and it's in this cute little case that organizes all of my cords and I leave that in my backpack that I mostly use for 
travel. It's super perfect and convenient. And again, you don't have to go all over the place grabbing all of your cords and cables for travel. Most of us have multiple phone chargers and backups of those types of things. So it doesn't hurt to keep them separated anyway into a travel case and make traveling a whole lot easier. Thanks so much for joining me today. I hope you learned some new tips or some methods that you want to implement to make your life a whole lot easier. If you did and you enjoyed the video, please consider giving this a thumbs up, subscribing to my channel if you haven't already, and until next time, I will see you guys later.